What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.5 beta 5 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes just about a week after the release of beta 4. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 14.5 beta 5, watchOS 7.4 beta 5, macOS Big Sur 11.3 beta 5, and tvOS 14.5 beta 5. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.5 beta 5. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the size of this update. And as you guys know, it is a fifth beta. You're not really expecting a big download. And you can see here we got a 248.9 megabyte download on my iPhone 12. And the size was similar across the board. Nothing was really over 300 megabytes for me. So a very small update as expected for a fifth beta so if we go into our settings and check out the build number let's go to general about 14.5 we can see the build here is 18e 5186a so back-to-back -back a builds that does indicate we are again very close to a final release and this is likely going to be just a final bug fix slash polish up update since we have back-to-back -back a builds but anyways if we go down to the modem firmware you can see that is 1.62 Point eleven. So there is a minor update there to the modem if you were having any issues with cell connectivity or anything that relies on the modem in your phone. So now what's new here in iOS 14.5 beta 5? And as I just alluded to, this is mainly going to be a final bug fix update. Given the size and the back-to-back -back A builds, you really cannot expect too much from a fifth beta. And that's the case. I really only noticed a few things that have changed, but I did also notice some additional bug fixes, which are definitely welcomed. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that this fifth beta downloaded very fast and installed very fast, probably the fastest I've ever had on any device, any version ever. It was extremely fast. So I'm not sure if we can really count that as a change or if it's just, you know, random because this was just a small update, but that is one thing I noticed. And that's also another thing that leads me to believe this is going to be the final beta release before 14.5 gets released to the public. Now I did notice a change inside of our settings here. So if we go into settings here on beta five, go down to general and to software updates, and then into automatic updates, there is a slight change here. So I'm going to bring in beta four over here on the left. And you can see when I go to automatic updates, you can see it now says download iOS updates instead of download new update. So beta four on the left, beta five on the right. If we go ahead and enable that, if we toggle that on, it now says install iOS updates instead of install security updates. So just some minor changes to the text there. The verbiage has changed slightly here in beta five. Now, one thing I did notice that is improved here in beta five is with the handoff feature with the HomePod mini. So I noticed that the now playing UI comes up faster and it isn't as clunky as it was in previous betas, including even beta four. So if I bring this closer here, you can see the UI pops up and it starts playing very fast. So before it would, you know, delay a couple of seconds, maybe like five seconds or six seconds, but now it comes up pretty much instantly and it starts playing instantly as well. Before there was a slight delay, uh, but that seems to be reduced here in this fifth beta. It's also just not as clunky. I mean, a lot of times, like you couldn't even really scroll or go to the next song without it lagging really bad, but now it changes songs pretty much right away. So everything is looking much better and much more polished here in 14.5 beta five when it comes to handoff with the HomePod mini. Apple also updated all of their iWork applications to version 11.0. So numbers, which is my favorite of the three, we have pages and we also have keynote all have been updated to version 11.0. You can see here and you can read off the change log here for quite a few changes. And this is for both iOS and Mac OS. They have been updated. Of course, this is not exclusive to 14.5 beta five, but it did just happen within the past 24 hours. So I wanted to let you guys know about that change. And one of the biggest fixes in beta five for me is that the AirPods max button sound has returned. So in beta four, when I would click on this button right here on my AirPods max, which changes from transparency mode to noise cancellation and vice versa, you usually get a sound to indicate that you've pressed the button and that it's changed, you know, from one mode to the other. But in beta four, there is no audible sound at all to let you know that you press that button. Well, now 
Thankfully in beta five, that has been fixed. It seems like a small thing, but it really annoyed me on beta four on my main device. You know, using these every day, I noticed that as a major bug. And thankfully that's been fixed here in beta five. And then another bug that has been fixed is that when you would reboot your phone on beta four and boot it back up and go back into music, you would have to reconnect to whatever device you were previously playing on. But now when you reboot your device, it remembers what you were connected to and continues playing on that. So for example, if I was playing on the home by mini, it would continue playing on that. Once I rebooted my device and went back into music, it would show it right here. I would not have to click on this and then go ahead and you know tap on that HomePod to play it again. It's the same with a Bluetooth speaker or anything like that. So that's also been fixed here in beta five. But aside from those changes and bug fixes, I really have not noticed anything else new here in 14.5 beta five. Like I mentioned, this is mainly a final bug fix release. This is mainly a final bug fix beta update before the final gets released. And we'll talk more about the release dates near the end of this video but that's pretty much everything I found so far. Of course, if I find anything else, I will let you guys know in my follow-up video coming this weekend. Now, let's talk about the performance because the performance on beta four had, was really good. It was much better than beta three. I mean, beta three was really a disaster for me and most people, but beta four really improved on that and the performance really shined. But going from beta four to beta five, I've really not been able to tell a difference. And that's probably because we just had such a big jump from beta three to beta four that now beta five feels pretty much similar. Although if we go into the Geekbench scores here, you will notice that I did score higher on beta five. So I got a 1596 single core and a 4071 multi-core. And if you look down there on March 15th, that is beta four. So you can see I got a 1596 with the exact same single core but the multi-core went from 4018 to 4071. So a nice jump there in the multi-core. And you know, that does indicate as well that this could potentially be faster than beta four. Although, you know, you gotta take all these results with a grain of salt because that does not, you know, take into account your day-to-day -day usage and how you use your phone. But beta five feels pretty much the same as beta four, which is a good thing. Now, as far as the battery life goes, as I mentioned in my follow-up video over the weekend, Battery life on beta four has been pretty solid and I would expect the same with beta five here. I would not really expect any tweaks to the battery life. Although I would say that 14.5 beta four, beta five, anything on 14.5 is still not as good in terms of battery life as 14.4 or 14.4.1. So maybe Apple will change something, you know, before this gets released to the public, I'm not too sure. But as of right now, the battery life is just not quite on par with 14.4 or 14.4.1. Although when you use it in a day-to-day -day basis, you probably won't be able to tell a difference. It's just because I use these every day and compare them every single day. I've noticed that I get about 20 minutes less of on-screen time than I did in the previous version. So that's pretty much everything with iOS and iPadOS 14.5 beta five. iPadOS was the same as iOS on this release. I did not notice any changes over there on the iPad. So let's go ahead and jump forward to what we could potentially see in the near future. So today, of course, is March 23rd on a Tuesday. So can we see a 14.5 RC build? And I say, yes, we could see that. And it could come as early as I would say Thursday or Friday. Now it could come as late as Monday. Although I do think later in the week is usually when the RC builds get released. Now, if that's the case, we could see 14.5 final released to the public next week on March 30th. So that looks like a date that is possible. Now it is also possible for Apple to skip that and go down to April 6th. Although I do think that iOS 14.5 is pretty much ready for prime time now. I mean, I really don't see any major bugs or really anything holding Apple back from releasing this to the public, you know, unless they have some event planned in early April or something like that. But as of right now, I would guess that we could see 14.5 final release to the public on March 30th. And of course, you guys know to keep it locked to my Twitter account, the Discord server, and of course here on YouTube as well for any updates if those release dates change or anything like that. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.5 beta 5. Not too much to talk about here. Pretty boring update. But of course, you guys know I do like to bring you every single iOS update here on the channel just to let you guys know they have been released and discuss everything with you guys. And if you enjoyed that, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any iOS, iPadOS, or really any Apple update in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.